Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Let me see if it's working. Let me see if it's working. There we go. It always takes a minute. You're now live. Praise God. Live and in living color on Facebook Live. Well, how's everybody today? It's been a busy day for me. But praise God, this is going to be the end. Well, it's going to be the end. I have a couple of add-ons that I'm going to add on to this probably today. Um, on the millennial reign in the new heaven and new earth. Along with the, just ending this. Um, kind of ending it. We'll see how it goes if, if we can end it um, today. But surely next week it will be ended. Praise God. So anyway, let's just calm. I want. I need to calm down a little bit. Praise God from this busy day I had today, and just kind of, ooh, just kind of rest in the Lord and in His presence right now, Father God. We just every head bowed in the name of Jesus. Every head bowed down. Hallelujah. Opening up your heart to Jesus, opening up your heart and your ears to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the churches, resting in Him right now in Jesus' name. So Father God, all who are listening, praise God, and who will listen, we come before your precious, wonderful throne of mercy and grace. We come before you humbly seeking your face for revelation, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding of you and of what you are teaching us today in the mighty name of Jesus. And we loose and bind the enemy and every tactic that he would have, praise God, to stop or disrupt this video in the mighty name of Jesus. You said, Father God, that we're the head and not the tail. We are above and not beneath. In the mighty name of Jesus, we take that and we put it in our bosom, in our hearts, in our spirit, and we move in it in the name of Jesus. And everyone that will listen, Father God, I ask you or that are listening and that will listen, I ask you to bless them, Lord. Bless their families. Bless their circumstances, praise God. Deliver them from whatever situation that they have that can be harmful to them or to their family in the mighty name of Jesus. I ask you to touch their hearts, that their hearts be so open to you, Father God, hallelujah, that they receive what you say directly to them in the name of Jesus. That this word will settle in their spirit. That they will walk in this word. Walk in your spirit. In the boldness of the Holy Ghost. In Jesus name. And we thank you that we have power over all the power of the enemy. And by no means shall nothing harm or hurt us. Hallelujah. We are warriors in the army of the Lord. And we give you praise for even calling our name, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. We just give you praise, Father God. And the Lord, um, as I read these journals, I always have two journals that I read every day that really encourage me in the word and in my daily walk. And this was yesterday I read this and it really blessed me. And I'm hoping that it will bless you. But this is something that you need to really and hopefully take to heart. Because Jesus is talking to you this afternoon. And he is letting you know that you are in Christ. He says, I will treat you as I treat my son. For I have placed you in him, my beloved. I will look upon you as my cherished one with the favor that Jesus deserves. Praise God. 
I will look upon you as my cherished one with the favor that Jesus deserves. He has taken all that you deserved and carrying it, carried it in your place to Calvary. Now, I will take all that he deserves and place it upon you. I have placed you in him. I have placed you in him so that I can treat you like him. Oh, take this, take this, take heed to this and take this, cherish these words, praise God. He says again, I have placed you in Christ so that I can treat you like him. This is what the father says. This is our mercy and grace, our gift to you, our delight. This is our Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, mercy and grace. Hallelujah. Our gift to you, our delight. You abide within my heart. I have placed you inside the relationship I have with my Son and Spirit. I accept you fully. I love you endlessly. Allow this love to penetrate you with divine light. Rest in knowing that you are firmly placed in Christ. Cling to this awareness. Let it steep into your very being. Allow it to alter your perception of who you are so that you will see yourself the way I see you. Praise God. Perfect, holy, blameless. You are my beloved. Let this word steep into your very being. Glory to God. Into your very being. Allow this word to alter your perception of who you are so that you will see yourself the way I, the Father, see you. I see you perfect, holy, and blameless. You are my beloved, whom I care for, whom I love, who I cherish, who I look after who I talk to, who I heal. You are my beloved, saith the Lord. And I cherish you. Know that I love you. Know that I care for you. Know that I seek to deliver you from the things of the world, the things of your flesh. Know that. And see that. And let me wrap you in my arms and hold you tight as you go through this world of destruction. Let me lead you down the path of righteousness for my name's sake. Let me guide you through the jungles of life. Hear my voice. Learn to hear my voice. Heed my word. Go forth in my spirit. Shun your flesh. And allow me to be all that you need, saith the Lord. I am the Lord thy God and I love you. Woo, glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, la baha, yes, it is a koshan de la baha, yeah. Oh, glory to your name, Jesus. Hallelujah, we praise and thank you for your word, oh God. I thank you that right now you're touching each and every person that is listening, that you're touching them, caressing them. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Letting them know that it's all right. That it's all right right now. It is all right. Glory to God. Open up your ears. Open up your spiritual ears and your heart and let me pour into you my heart, my word my will and my way hallelujah thus saith the lord thus saith the lord to you who are listening all that have an ear to hear let them hear what the spirit of the lord is saying to the churches hear my word 
receive my word and walk in my word, saith God. Glory to God. Woo, thank you, Jesus. Oh, we give you praise. Hallelujah. Thank you for that word, Lord. Thank you for that word. We give you praise. Mm. Ooh, I receive it in the name of Jesus. This lesson, praise God, on intimacy with Jesus is for you. It's for you to get into it, get into God, get into the relationship that you're close with God so that he can navigate you through this wicked world. So that your eyes be open and not blind to the enemy's deceits, praise God. And to your own flesh, that you recognize your own self, that you recognize the deceits and strategies of the enemy. These lessons are for you for that. Glory to God. And to seek God as to why you're here in the relationship. Relationship means everything. Relationship with God means everything. Everything. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. So much, so, so very much that God has to divulge to you guys. Praise God. So, so very much. Praise God. I just thank him. And I'm honored that he would even choose me to divulge it to you. Glory to God. I also want to thank, um, well, I want to just lift up uh, the family of my dear friend, Carolyn. Praise God. I just lift up her family. I lift up her friends, myself, um, as she has transitioned on to be with the Lord and everyone <laughs> that is transitioning praise God in the name of Jesus oh Lord hallelujah I just want to move by the spirit of the Lord uh, we left off um, where God was talking about um, <laughs> come and dine with me hallelujah and seeing his words or seeing yourself as he sees you, seeing you as he sees you, seeing your circumstances as he sees your circumstances. Praise God. So we're going to go to, thank you, Father, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 20. Lord, the, woo, I then got hot. The Holy Ghost got me hot. Thank you, Jesus. I take this off. And it's usually cold in here. But Hebrews chapter 13, verse 22 and 23, I believe. No. 20 and 21. Thank you, Lord. Which says, Now may the God of peace, who is the author and the giver of peace, who brought again from among the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood that sealed and ratified the everlasting agreement or covenant or testimony. Strengthen, complete, perfect, and make you, glory to God, what you ought to be and equip you with everything good that you may carry out his will while he, he himself in you and accomplishes I'm sorry, while he himself works in you and accomplishes that which is pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, the Messiah, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen. So be it. So again, now may the God of peace, who is the author and the giver of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood that sealed and ratified the everlasting agreement or covenant, strengthen, complete, perfect, and make you, praise God, make you what you ought to be and equip you with everything good that you may carry out his will. Not your will, my will, the pastor's will, but his will for your life. Glory to God. While he himself works in you, and accomplishes that which is pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, the anointed one. Praise God. 
whom we give glory forever and ever. Amen. So be it. Glory to God. Mm. You need to really meditate on that 21. That he may strengthen and complete and perfect you. Make you what you ought to be. And then equip you with everything good that you may carry out his will. For he himself works in you and accomplishes that which is pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom the glory forever and ever, praise God, be. Amen. The commentary, which goes with this, calls the Blue Prince of Spirit by Jonathan Kahn, Book of Mysteries. He says, and again, I, I say this all the time, that Jonathan Kahn is the student and Jesus is teaching him. And I do believe that Jonathan Kahn really walked with Jesus. And the books that he has written are really a teaching that God taught him to, to you know, write these books for us. Praise God. So, here we go. The Blueprints of the Spirit. The teacher took me into this chamber of vessels and to its only bookcase. Jesus took Jonathan into the chamber of vessels and to its only bookcase. So inside the shelves were large bound volumes of plans, instructions, and diagrams. So he moved one of them from the top shelf and laid it on the wooden table and opened it up. So I just believe that, you know, he had a vision of Je and Jesus visited him or took him into the spirit to see these things in heaven. So, the teacher took me into the chamber of vessels and to its only bookcase. Inside its shelves were large bound volumes of plans, instructions, and diagrams. He removed one of them from the top shelf, laid it on the wooden table, and then he opened it up. So he says, it looks like a mechanical drawing, he sa I said. It's a blueprint of sorts, he said. These are the plans based on the instructions given by God for the building of the tabernacle, which is a church-like tabernacle. Now note the precision. Everything had to be made exactly according to the pattern to the exact measurements and specifications. And it all came about through a man named Bazel. And God had filled him with his spirit. And though Bazel, the spirit of, the spirit of God, built the tabernacle, so what does that reveal? So he says, at, at, and it all came about through a man, Bazil. And I remember reading this about building the temple. And what God did was he gave them the spirit of the Holy Ghost. In other words, he anointed them with the spirit of the Holy Ghost to be able to build the tabernacle. So they had, he um, anointed Bazil, and I think it was um, a couple of other guys that he had anointed to do the certain works and specifications to build the tabernacle. So like he was saying here, everything had to be made exactly according to the pattern that God set for them, to the exact measurement and specifications. And I, it reminds me of when I first got ordained. And uh, the sister, it was two sisters, one, um, you know, sisters in the Lord. Anyway, she had told me that God had designed this apostle robe for me. And um, she had, you know, wrote it out or how did a, a diagram of it, you know, or a pattern of it. And she had this brother sew it together, you know, and it tripped me out. And then this other lady told me that God had told her to make this robe of, uh, I think it's gold and white, but the apostle's robe was white and it had like a, a blue, it has like a blue uh, in the sleeves. It's, it's like white, but mostly white. And God will tell people what to do. It means something. So the specifications that they had meant something, how God wanted this tabernacle to be made. So, and it all came through a man named Basil. This is the guy that did it. So God filled him with his spirit. Like we just said, he filled him with his Holy Spirit and through Bazil, the spirit of God built the tabernacle. So what does that reveal? The spirit, I said, fulfills the plans of God. Check that out. The spirit 
fulfills the plans of God. Think about that. The Spirit fulfills the plans of God. So the Holy Ghost fulfills the plans that he's got for you and for me. Just like I said, those two robes, praise God, that I have were specified and made from the Holy Ghost. Wasn't nothing I went to the store and bought. They were handmade, praise God. Specifications. So God has specifications and measurements for your life. Think about it. And the only way you're going to find out about it, I say this all the time, is your relationship with him. It ain't about going to church every Sunday. It ain't even about going to the ministry. It's about you getting in your prayer closet and asking him, talking with him, fellowshipping with him so that he can give you instruction on what he wants you to do. It's between you and him. And then he puts all the pieces together of the puzzle and it becomes a picture of what he wants we all play a part in the big picture some of us play some of us you know don't play refuse to play that's up to you i'm a player praise god and whatever he say that's what i'm gonna do because i know he has specifics for me specifics for you and it's up to you to do them I hope you're listening, people, because it's so important. God has ministries that he wants to fulfill a certain purpose in the big picture. Praise the Lord. And most people tend to lean on their own understanding or go before God and do what he did tell them to do, what they think they should do. You have to have a personal relationship with God and you have to hear him. And you have to know the difference between the voice of the devil and the voice of God. And that takes practice. And you got to really, 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 really look deep within yourself and check yourself. In other words, why am I doing this? Am I doing this for me or for God? Am I doing this because I need some money? Or am I doing this because I, 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 I want to trust God? Or because he told me to do it? Did I really hear him clearly? A lot of people say, I don't know if that was God or not. Well, if you don't know if it was God or not, then what you need to do is seek his face. Because if you seek God's face, he's going to tell you what he wants you to do it. He's going to show you the enemy's tactics. I'm a witness to it. It just happened to me just recently. Glory to God. Hallelujah. The enemy comes in sheep clothing. Hallelujah. You got to know what's behind everybody's motives. God will tell you. And that don't mean you got to be mad with somebody or, you know, get all huffed up about it. If it ain't for you, it ain't for you. But actually, it's all for you. It's for you to know. And then ask God how to proceed with it. Sometimes people say this kind of teaching is too deep. Well, I'm going to tell you something. You best be get deep with God. For real. Because he's the only one that can show you, you, really, if you really want to see. And once he shows you you, then you work on, you and him work on you, and then he'll begin to show you other things, other people, what their motives are, and show you how to navigate through that. How to pray for people instead of, you know, once you find out, I've said this before, you find out this person is toe up from the flow up. You start praying for them. That don't mean that you step in harm's way either. You just back up and pray. But be sincere about it, folks. Praise God. So anyway, he says, what does that reveal? Meaning, what does that reveal that God had filled Bazil with the spirit to do the work? 
So he says, the spirit, I, he said, I said, fulfills the plans of God. So the spirit of the Lord fulfills the plans of God. Hear me, people. That's why I kind of got a little deep about your motives for doing things. The Spirit of the Lord fulfills the plans of God in your life. Understand that. It's up to you whether you hear or do. But he got plans for everybody. So you need to find out. What is his plan for you? What is his plan for you, folks? Are you too busy with your family? Are you too busy with... You know, your job, you're too busy with what career you want to be. You better find out what his plan is for your life. Because everybody could be gone in a minute. In a second, they're gone. Think about it, people. Hallelujah. So, he says the Spirit fulfills the plans of God. Exactly. Jesus said exactly. All right. And the building of the tabernacle was part of the law of Moses. And the day that marks the giving of the law is the Feast of Shavuot. And on the same day, the Feast of Shavuot, also known as Pentecost, the Spirit of God was given to the first followers of Messiah. The same Spirit that translated all these plans and blueprints and measurements into reality. So again, the building of the tabernacle was part of the law of Moses, the Mosaic law, the Ten Commandments. And the day that marks the giving of the law is the Feast of Shavuot. And on that same day, the Feast of Shavuot, also known as Pentecost. So the Feast of Shavuot is also known as Pentecost. What is Pentecost? Pentecost is when they all got together and they got the infilling of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues. So also known as Pentecost, the Spirit of God was given to the first followers of the Messiah. They spoke in tongues. Hallelujah. After Jesus ascended, they went to the, 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 the top of the place and, you know, uh, what did you call it? But anyway, they went to the, the upper room. Thank you, Holy Ghost. They went to the upper room and they waited on the Holy Ghost. They waited to be baptized in the Holy Ghost. Praise God. And then they, there was a cracking and a wind that came and they all spoke in tongues. That's in, in 1 Corinthians, I mean, is it 1 Corinthians 2? Two, two, no, 12. I think it's 12 or 2. But anyway, hallelujah. But they all spoke in tongues. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost, baptized with the Holy Ghost, and they spoke in tongues. And when I say tongues, they spoke in different languages. So they had different people there. And they all spoke a different language. So, say I spoke in Spanish, I'm a Spanish-speaking person, and the other person is an English person, so that he was speaking Spanish and I was speaking English. So they were all tripped out, like, whoa, you know, but they were all understanding what they were saying, and they were praising God. Praise God. So, it's Acts, I'm sorry, Acts chapter 2. I tell you, boy, praise God for the Holy Ghost. So the same spirit that translated all these plans and blueprints and measurements into reality. That same spirit was given to his people, is given to you. Why? To do the same work, to translate the purposes of God into reality. Hallelujah. God wants to bring the plans that he has for your life into reality. It's up to you to really see it and do it. So again, just so you understand, they were building the tabernacle as a part of the law. And the day that marked the giving of the law is the Feast of Shabbat. And on that same day, the Feast of Shavuot, also known as Pentecost, the Spirit of God was given to the first followers of the Messiah, the same Spirit that translated all these plans and blueprints and measurements into reality. Praise God. So that same Spirit was given to his people, is given to you. The plan that God has for your life, the plan that he has for your life, before you 
step over into the other side. It's part of the big picture. And that's spreading the good news of the gospel. And in doing that, it takes a pure heart for God, especially in these last days. Pure heart, meaning that everything in your spirit is about Jesus. It's about the gospel, like it was for them. I mean, sure, we're going to have, you know, issues and problems, but that doesn't come first. We ask God to deal with that. That's why he's trying to tell us. He's trying to show us how to live a life as a believer and be victorious in that. So there's things that you have to do to be pure in your heart towards God. So here we go. The same spirit was given to his people was given to you. Why? To do the same work to translate the purposes of God into a reality. As it is written, I will pour out my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. That means that you have to yield to the Holy Ghost. You cannot be selfish. You have to be selfless, yielding to the Holy Ghost. Whatever he tells you to do, that's what you do. He said, my sheep know my voice and the voice of a stranger they will not follow. That don't mean that you shug your family, that you, you know, don't do anything. You look to God to lead you in dealing with your family, your friends, praise God, your job, your ministry, everything. And we were just reading about tithes and offerings in another class where nothing, hear me, nothing belongs to you. Nothing. God made everything. So everything belongs to God. We think it belongs to us, but it don't. It belongs to God. God gave you your breath. He gave you your life. He gave everybody on this planet and in this universe their breath and life. He's the one that takes it. Nobody else. So it's so important, people, and I can't say this enough, that you get close to God, that you talk to him all the time, and let him lead you to the promised land. In the name of Jesus. So he will cause you to walk in his ways. As long as you yield to him. Your heart. Hallelujah. So I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes or my ways. Behind the word statutes is a Hebrew word that speaks of appointed times and measures. Behind the word statutes is a Hebrew word that speaks of appointed times and measures. So, you see God's purposes, God's will and plans for your life are just as detailed and specific and precise as the plans and measurements of the tabernacle. Hallelujah. So his plans are perfect and not only for your life, but for every day of your life, for every moment of your life. That's why he gives you the spirit of the Holy Ghost. So the Spirit gives you the power to fulfill God's plan, to move in his perfect will, and to walk in the exact footsteps down to the exact measurements and specifications of his appointed purposes for your life. Make it your aim to find and fulfill the perfect and precise plan God has for your life. Make it your aim, glory to God, to find and fulfill the perfect and precise plan God has for your life. Live by the Spirit, move in His leading, and you will walk into your appointed footsteps. Footsteps as real and as and exact as the diagrams in this book. They are already here in the blueprints of the Spirit. That's awesome. In the blueprints of the Spirit. Seek to live this day in the heavenly pattern. Walk, speak, and move by the impulse and leading of the Spirit into the divine blueprint 
for your life. I try to do this every day. I try to keep aware of God in my goings and comings. I try to hear him if he wants me to do something special or, or whatever it is that he wants me to do or not do. I try to hear how I should um, respond to certain situations, praise God. It's a practice that you have to practice on a daily basis. And you won't be deceived, I'm telling you. As long as you keep it real with God. In your relationship with him. And don't try to fool nobody. Because you're only fooling yourself. Don't try to hide because you can't hide from God. You definitely can't. But, you know, have a mindset every day to seek his face and to try to respond the way he would respond. And the only way you're going to know how he would respond is, I'm telling you, is to get with him and his word. And then practice. What did they say? Practice makes perfect. So you keep practicing it. This is really, the blueprints of the spirit is heavy, and it is the bomb. And I wanted to share it with you because it has blessed me, and it keeps me right. <laughs> it keeps me right, honey. And it'll keep you right. That's why I tell you guys to go back and listen on YouTube. These lessons. Take notes, praise God, as my friend Marianne does when she um puts her comments in she puts comments uh they're like notes and they're the bomb you know because they speak the truth and that's why i wish that you know all of you were in we were in a building or a house or something and i could just ask you what you're getting out of it you know i can't do that here uh because i can't see you but i like to ask my students that do come here for their Bible study lessons, I ask them, what are you getting out of this? Are you getting anything out of it? And how is your relationship with the Lord? You know, is it coming along? Is it kind of dry and, or whatever? And, and then, you know, the Lord will use me sometimes to help them with their relationship with God. You know, or just steer them in a way that will help them be able to see and not see. <laughs> I'll better say be able to see. Praise God. And then not see. Sometimes God doesn't reveal it to you right away. But you trust him that he's going to do that. Praise God. So the next um, scripture will be John chapter 4 verse um, 34. Yeah, praise God. John 4.34. Hallelujah. All right. Jesus said to them, My food, my nourishment is to do the will and the pleasure of him who sent me and to accomplish and completely finish his work. That's the kind of mindset you have. One of my students was telling me that the Lord had told her to stay the course. And that's important that you stay the course that God has given you. Don't give up. Don't go backwards. Keep going forward. Jesus said to them, my food, he says, my food, my nourishment is to do the will and pleasure of him who sent me and to accomplish and completely finish his work. Stay the course. That's what Jesus said. That's my food. That's what I eat, praise God, is to finish the course, praise God. And so in order to finish the course, you got to know what that course is. So if you don't know what it is, praise God, find out what it is through your relationship with the Lord. So this is a commentary that's doing God's will 
by Kenneth Hagin. Well, it's one of his students, Wyatt Brown, doing his will in the Kenneth Hagin uh, ministry. It says, God wants his children to know his will. God wants his children to know his will. He doesn't want his will to be a mystery to us. When I was growing up, he said, I didn't know it was possible for someone to know the will of God. I would hear people say, and still hear them say today, things like, well, I guess it was meant to be, or you just don't know what God wants to do. When I finally discovered I can know the will of God, I realized that his will isn't an event you look at after the fact and say, well, I guess that was or wasn't the will of God. So after, he says, after studying the Bible on the subject, I learned that God's will is often a doing of something. Jesus said, for I came down from heaven not to do mine own will, but the will of him that sent me. He also told his disciples, my food is to do the will of him who sent me and to finish his work. Notice, Jesus didn't say my food is to be in the will. He said doing the will of God is being in the will of God. We are to be doers of God's will. Well, what is his will? It's in his word. Also, his, word, his, his will is what he tells you in the relationship. If he tells you, stop gossiping, if he tells you, you know, to run down the street and stand there for five minutes, do it. Don't ask him why, or this seems crazy, just do it. That's the will of the Father, that's real simple. But you don't know the big picture. Because you run down to, to the corner, and you might see a homeless man, you might be able to stop an accident, I don't know. You don't know until you do it. Amen. So that's what he's saying. We ought to be doers of God's will. From heaven's perspective, we are God's agents, carriers of his will on earth. Many Christians want to know if they are in the will of God. But the question should be, God, am I doing what you want me to do? Now, that's a question everybody who's listening needs to ask God. Am I doing what you want me to do? Half of us don't even know. Is there something you want me to be part of today on a daily basis? There are people, places, and situations all around us waiting for God's will to happen. And as carriers of his will, we bring with us the potential for God's plan to occur in those places and situations, just like the example God just gave. Nothing is more satisfying than being involved in bringing an answer from heaven that changes someone's life. Like calling up somebody, like God does that to me. Call up so-and-so. I don't know why I'm calling the person, but I'm just obedient. That's the word, obedient to do it. And then I find out why I called. And people have called me and said, I don't know why I'm calling you, but God told me to call you. And as we're conversating, it comes up. Why? That person called me. Praise God. So as agents of change on the earth, we get to bring God's living bread to hungry people. Amen. We get to bring light to those in the dark, strength to those who are weak, and healing to those who are sick. When we're surrounded by suffering people, we shouldn't wonder what did they do wrong. We should take a heavenly perspective and ask God, how do you want to use me, Lord, as an agent to bring your will into that situation? How do you want to use me, Lord? I'm a vessel to be used by you. What, what, what is it that you want me to do? Sometimes it's nothing. Sometimes it's something. But you've got to compensate with God to find out what that is. Just like I talked about uh, in a few lessons back, somebody shot there on the ground. They're bleeding, and God is telling you, don't touch them. Why, Lord? You ain't got to ask why. We don't know why. His will is not to touch that person. Don't do it. Or his will would be to help them. I don't know. But that's what I'm talking about, being obedient 
And the only way you can be obedient and know his will is to hear him and do what he tells you to do. Whether it seems abstract or not. I tell you, a lot of people think they know God, but they don't. And to get to know him is to get with him and his word and experience him on your daily life. So we get to bring light to those in dark strength, to those who are weak, and healing to those who are sick. So when we're surrounded by suffering people, we shouldn't wonder what they did wrong. We should take a heavenly perspective and ask, how does God want to use me as an agent to bring his will into that situation? In and of ourselves, we can do nothing. Even Jesus said, I do nothing of myself. But as my father hath taught me, I speak these things. And he hath sent me, is he who that sent me is with me. He that hath sent me is with me. King James Version. In other words, he that sent me is with me. For I do always those things that please him. So I always do the things that please God. Whatever it is. Whether I understand it or not, I hope you're hearing this, people. Because we have a, 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 a problem of leaning on our own understanding. And the Word of God says, lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge me, and I will direct your path, no matter what it is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In and of ourselves, we can do nothing. Praise God. Our Heavenly Father does the work. Therefore, we never need to feel inadequate. We only need to show up and do whatever he tells us. Hallelujah. The one who equipped Jesus has also equipped and commissioned us to bring his will on earth, people. When we go into situations as God's agent, he does things through us far beyond what we can imagine whatever that is glory to God I like to think of it as a wonderful snurgy is what he says snurgy I have to look that word up we do our part and God does his part our part is to show up and yield our part is to show up in whatever he tells us to do and yield praise God if you show up and yield he'll either open your mouth and fill it or he'll open your spirit to hear it. Because people can be talking to you. And I tell this to people all the time. People can be talking to you with their mouth. And their heart is saying something totally different. The word says that God looks on the heart of man. And a lot of times if you're close to God. If you're conversing with him. And you have an intimate relationship with him. A person can be talking to you and you hear two voices. And you wonder, what is that? And God's saying, you're hearing the heart. The mouth is saying one thing, but the heart is saying something else. And that's something you need to understand. I know this is kind of a deep, deep, but I like to tell it like it is. Because you need to get deeper with God. A deeper relationship with God. If you already have one, you need to get deeper with God because these days that are coming up are going to be some deep days. The days that we have never seen before. Like it's going on right now. It's a lot going on right now. But God said, I am God. Trust me. Yield to me. Allow me to run your life. And everything else will be all right. Like it says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all those things that concern you will be added unto you. He will take care of them. Glory to God. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So we only need to show up and do whatever he tells us. The one who equipped Jesus has also equipped and commissioned us to bring his will on earth. When we go into situations as God's agent, he does things through us far beyond what we can imagine. I like to think of it as a wonderful snurching. We do our part and God does his part. 
Our part is to show up with his will. When we lay hands on the sick, he causes them to recover. He causes them to recover. When we say what he tells us to say and do what he tells us to do, it activates his power and his life through you. Then he comes in and changes the situation from whatever it was to whatever he wants it to be. Oh, glory to God. Whatever he wants it to be. Praise God. Hallelujah. It's time for the body of Christ to see ourselves in light of what we really are. Vessels of God. This is who God made us to be. We get to participate and be on Jesus' team. And that's what you want. Glory to God. So remember, every time you walk into a situation, you're carrying God's plans. When you deliver those plans, heaven anoints them so that battles are won and victories happen. So that's why it's so important, people. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. That your heart be pure for God. God is looking for pure-hearted people who are going to jump when he say jump, say or speak when he say speak. Hear me, people. Hear God. That's what he wants from you right now in any situation that you're in. We all have different situations that we're in. But it's real important that you hear God. And a lot of us, praise God, it's a lot of people that's hearing themselves and not hearing God. Or they're hearing religion and they're not hearing God. You need to know his voice. And the only way you're going to know his voice is by intimacy with him. Penetration, spirit to spirit. Glory to God. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. God has said something to me to say to you tonight or this afternoon. If you don't have an intimate relationship, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Hando. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. If you don't have an intimate relationship with God, God is saying, come, come into, hallelujah, I'll say my boudoir, come into relationship with me, deep relationship with me. He said, come, come, come now, my believers, my children, come unto me, into the depths of my spirit. Those who are aren't saved that are listening to this, come to the living waters of salvation. Come now and confess your sins. Come now and confess to me and make me the head of your life. And then we can go into an intimate relationship. God is saying this afternoon, come unto me come unto me that I may make you what I designed you to be on this side of the veil come into intimate relationship with me thus saith the oh glory to God thank you Jesus it's up to you. It's up to you. It's up to you. And you may say, I already have a relationship with you, Father. God is saying, come into the depths of my spirit now. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thus saith the Lord to you. Glory to God. Father, we give you praise and thanksgiving.
for the word that you have spoken today. May it melt like butter on every one's spirit who takes you in this word into their spirit. May it melt like butter on their spirit in the name of Jesus. Amen and amen and amen and amen. I had some other um, literature that um, I wanted you to read. I mean, I wanted to read to you. Praise God. Hallelujah. I'm just basking in the Lord right now. And I'm just thanking him for his presence right now. And I hope that his presence, praise God, is seeping in you. Hallelujah. I hope that it's seeping in your spirit deep, 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 deep. Praise God. In the mighty name of Jesus. Glory to God. Mm. Next week I'll have um, the millennial reign. And I will have. Thank you Jesus. Glory to God. The new heaven and the new earth literature. To read to you. For your information and understanding. About what happens. Praise God. After. The rapture. Praise God. In the name of Jesus. I also invite you. To come to service Saturday night if you like to praise the Lord with us and uh, partake of his word on the end times at Saturday 7 o'clock in the evening at 863 Manzanita Avenue Pasadena California 91103. Would love for you to come, but I invite everybody who's listening and who will listen to come and partake in person the Spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. In a group. Praise God. Hallelujah. So let the Lord lead you if you care to give. Praise God. Hallelujah. I believe there's Zelle um, Cash App, or you can mail it to the address I gave you, 863 Manzanita Avenue, Pasadena, California, 91103. And there it is. May the Lord bless you and keep you. I love you so very much. I thank God for his word. It just blesses me so much. And I hope it really blesses you too. Praise God. Everyone out there, be blessed of the Lord. And hopefully some of you will come and praise the Lord with us and partake of this end time word that God has given. All right. All right. God bless you again. And I'll see you next week or on Saturday night. <laughs> and it's at the Sugar Shack in the back of my house. Hallelujah. Ain't no church and no frills, no none of that. Matter of fact, it looks like 1975 back here. <laughs> all right. All right. God bless. Keep you and see you sooner than later. All right. Bye-bye.